Hello and welcome to episode 23 of the chess.com rapid rating climb. My name is Alex. I'm rated between 1950 and 2000 ELO in classical standard chess. And therefore, in this series, the whole point is to get my rapid rating up to at least 2000 ELO. We started from around 1600, I want to say, and we have just passed 1900, which we did in the previous episode. You can check out all the previous episodes in the playlist linked below uh, but of course you could just watch this do whatever you want either way i hope you find it enjoyable and educational so with that being said we have a caro khan defense this is one of my favorite openings in chess because it is just so solid it's very very simple to play you don't have to learn that much theory and you know people might argue that it's a bit boring sometimes but as the black piece is, especially once you start getting higher rated, you can't really push for an advantage early on in the opening. You need to try and push for equality or dynamic equality, where like maybe your pawn structure is a bit worse, but your pieces are very active. So that would be like a dynamic equality. But okay, our opponent goes for the fantasy variation, and we haven't seen this yet in this rating climb i don't think we've seen it yet on my channel at all and my line against it is e6 i will go into some of the lines that can come from the fancy variation if you take on e4 and i will note that down now so i make sure to check that in the analysis i'm very professional on this channel um by the way thank you so much for the recent support it's been like insane the way the channel's been growing over the past like week can't thank you guys enough and I you know my role here is just to try and deliver as much interesting and educational content as possible so if there are specific things you want me to do please let me know and I mean I can see from the support that I'm getting on a lot of these videos that a lot of them people do enjoy so let's just see move three after f3 I need to go over d takes e4 lines. Our opponent goes knight to e2. So you might be screaming, okay, what about takes, takes, and queen to h4? Because e6 allows our queen to get out. And if g3 is played, then queen takes e4. And you go up a pawn with an attack on the rook, rook goes to g1, easy win. Well, yes, but after takes, takes, queen to h4, my opponent... I assume is preparing knight to g3 which will not only block my check on the king but also defend the e4 pawn now even though that does defend the position for that move we do need to check the line anyway so takes takes here here i don't see how we break through because the logical move to play right now would be bishop to d6 because if white just continues to develop, then we could potentially go takes, takes, queen h4, and then knight g3 won't be possible because we'll be able to take with the bishop. But if we go bishop d6, our opponent can not only advance e5 with tempo against our bishop and shut that diagonal down, but he can also just play a move like knight c3, which defends e4. So if we go for the same line of takes, takes, queen to h4 then g3 can be played because this knight defends e4 with me okay cool hope that makes sense therefore i'm going to play this like a french that's my plan and i do this a lot in the Cairo Khan fantasy variation i play knight to f6 and i want white to go e5 there we go and we bring our knight back to d7 now the Karo Khan is very similar to the French, but the idea is that before you play e6, you develop your bishop to a square like f5 or g4. Then you play e6, locking the pawn chain together, because this is an incredibly powerful pawn centre, very hard to break down. Especially once a pawn has advanced to e5, it can no longer challenge the d5 pawn. But because of the way this particular variation works, the fantasy variation, I like to play it like a French and try and claim that f3 is a stupid move if you're going to play e5. Because it kind of is. It doesn't really make any sense anymore. Because my bishop isn't even going out anyway. So knight h5. c5 should be the move on everybody's mind. Because you want to try and break apart the white centre. Especially because he spent two moves with this knight. 
So that's what we're going to do. If he takes, we don't even have to take on c5 because e5 will be hanging. I believe knight to c6 makes a lot of sense. We're just going to put a ton of pressure on his center. We're not actually threatening anything yet, but we're just building up the pressure. Moves like queen b6 should be on your radar. And f6 sometimes can be a move. Personally, I try to avoid it in most cases because I don't like weakening my king side so much. But if I don't think he has a viable attack, and f3 could play against him because it doesn't allow the queen to access the diagonal to my king that would be weakened if the f6 is played. So we're trying to refute the fantasy variation by not playing into it. I did a similar thing in a video I made talking about refuting the alien gambit, which is a line of the Karo Khan. Again, you can if you check my channel and just search up Alien Gambit, if you struggle against the Alien Gambit, I'd highly recommend you um, have a look at that because the whole idea is to refute the line by just not playing into it. And that's what we're doing with the fantasy. The whole point of the fantasy is to get black to take on e4 so you can take back with the f-pawn and get a massive center, an open f-file, and huge attacking play. Now, the best move is to take in the fantasy, according to the computer, but practically speaking, white knows all of those lines, and I don't. I don't want to know them, because I don't want to have to do loads of theoretical research for each individual variation. I'd rather bring it back to an idea that I know, and I know these French structures with the pawn structure like this, and putting the pawn from c6 to c5. I understand how these work. The whole point is to bait e5 out, retreat this knight to d7. Of course, white doesn't have to play e5, but typically he does, because it's the most normal move to play. And then we continue to put pressure on the center. Okay, knight to a3. What's the idea of knight a3? Well, he could be trying to go to c2 to defend d4 from c2, or he could be trying to go to b5 to get into d6, because d6 is a weakness. And b5 is accessible because we moved our pawn away from c6, which was defending c b5, and we put it on c5. Now, we could play a6 preemptively to stop any knight coming in here. We could also take. And if take, we could do this. Maybe play a check. It's kind of tempting. Queen b6, I also like the look of. Because we are just threatening to win this pawn. And if he goes knight to c2. He's probably okay. It's not easy to get an advantage there I don't think. So this does look tempting. Taking on d4 and after takes playing bishop takes pawn takes. But the problem is that we need to find a follow up. However. d4 is going to be weak forever. But training off the dark squared bishop with our pawn structure so fixed on the light squares is a big commitment to make. We could play queen a5, pinning the c pawn. And if knight c2, we could maybe take and then like knight takes, knight takes, queen takes. Although actually, if he can't take back with the pawn, if he can't take back with the pawn, on d4 then e5 is going to be incredibly weak so if we do something like queen a5 bishop d2 takes takes this knight will be hanging as well and if queen to a5 knight to c2 takes and knight takes we can probably just take on e5 so queen a5 makes a whole lot of sense to me i feel like this knight is misplaced on g3 it probably should have stayed on e2 to defend d4 so I'm really liking the move queen a5. He could take me. He could take me. And if I take back on c5, then b4 will fork my pieces. But if he takes, then I can just take on e5. So he does go knight c2. But what about if we take? This was the whole idea, to pin this pawn so that this pawn can't recapture and keep his structure stable. 
If white could play one more move and play f4, that would secure the e5 pawn and white would probably be good. But I don't think that works anymore. Now, if he takes and we take and queen takes, we could maybe go bishop c5. But the queen could go to f4 to maintain an eye on the e5 pawn. And then we don't win the pawn. We have a good position, but I'd rather be up a pawn. So after knight takes, we could take with the d knight or the c knight. I think it makes sense to take with the d knight because we want him to trade with us. So we leave this trade offer open. I think white might have just realized that he hung a pawn. But these positions are difficult to play from the white side. Yeah, so he's just going to give us the pawn. He's going to do it this way. His point is, if we take on e5, then he's going to take on d4 and open up an attack on our queen. But we're not going to let him do that. We can probably just take here. Bishop takes, drop the queen back to c7. Or maybe even back to d8, just to stay out of any danger. Yeah, let's just take it. So that's a pawn. We're up a pawn now. Queen c7 I didn't like the look of because the c file is open, but I don't think that's that scary. I don't think I'm scared of that. e5 is still weak, but then queen c7 he can just go f4. So I could go queen to b6 to stay on the long diagonal, and bishop to d4 isn't really playable because I just take it. So I'm going to go to b6. I'm, I'm stopping him from castling. I'm pressuring b2. And we're also just maintaining a bit of control over d4. If, if um, white does something like bishop e2, we are just going to take on e5. So he probably has to play f4 to defend e5. Now, bishop c5 is tempting here. Threatening bishop 2 f2. Can he play b4? No, we control that square too many times. And there's no rook b1 pin action because if like we trade knights on c2 or we take a bishop on c3 at any point, both of these moves come with check, so we should be fine. So bishop c5 seems like an incredibly logical move. We could... I was considering a move like knight to b5, trying to just trade, but then he can play like knight d4. And that doesn't really benefit us anyway. So bishop c5 looks logical. You always have to watch out when you create this kind of thing, that there is no move like knight to a4 because typically a knight develops to c3 and then if it goes to a4 it forks the queen and the bishop so you always want to look out for that kind of thing but here because he's developed his knight like this we don't have that problem and like i said b4 is not playable in the current position because we defend it too many times compared to his two defenders we have three attackers he might play a3 preparing b4 as he does but we can just go bishop to f2 check he might have missed that. Bishop f2, king e2. We could take the knight. But we could also here, here. Yeah, we could just take the knight. I don't see a reason we wouldn't give this check. Even if we have to trade our dark squared bishop off, I think it's probably good. Now, I would love to play queen to e3 checkmate, but the knight defends that square, unfortunately. d4 is a tempting move. Very tempting move. Because we now control d4 three times. So this would force his bishop to move. Say, like, d2. And then if we play takes, takes, we could take on b2, but I don't really want to. I don't really want to give this bishop away, but I think I have to. This knight can't move anywhere, though, so we maybe don't have to do it just yet. 
we could maybe castle. The thing is, if we take this knight, then the rook is going to open up, and that makes castling a bit scary. A lot to consider. A move I like is an idea of taking this knight and then going knight c5 into e4. Because it's difficult for white to defend the four square. We, we could try playing it immediately. Knight two, c5, and if he takes, I don't think there's any good discovered checks. Knight b3. It's two pieces for a rook. So let's take the knight. This looks good. Let's do it. Because his king blocks his bishop, the bishop can't defend e4 right now. The king also can't really step onto this long diagonal because we'll be giving discovered checks with like knight b3. Previously that wasn't good because he would have taken a bishop and then we would have taken here and then he would have taken back and it would be a knight and a bishop for a rook, which isn't a good, isn't a good trade. Uh, especially because our rooks are sitting in the corners, right? So we're up a pawn. We have a pretty strong center and he can't castle. This knight is about to become very strong as well. The issues, however, white has an open file, which makes it difficult for us to castle. Our bishop is also blocked out, which is annoying. Makes development a little bit harder. Uh, but if we can go to d7, we can bring this rook to c8. So our opponent's point here is if we take, he's going to play bishop takes and pin the knight to the queen. But we're not going to let him do that. I much prefer to play knight to e4 to get the knight out of the way. Also attack this bishop. I don't think I'm missing anything. Let's do it. We're also threatening g3 check to pick up the rook. We're not threatening to win this knight because he controls the square twice, as do we. But if we can facilitate more trades, that's good for us. If we get the option, so say he defends um, g3 with a move like rook h3, we could just take the bishop. He also can't play a move like bishop to e1 to save the bishop and defend g3 because then the knight hangs. He might have to take us. Or do that. Wow, okay. Okay, that is um interesting move. Shall we say? Maybe it's okay though. One of the issues is the fact that our bishop is kind of stuck. Now we could take, and after bishop takes... I don't really want to open the lines for him. We could take here. And after pawn takes, we could take. And after pawn takes, we do strengthen his center a bit. But is it worth it? I don't really like the open B file. Not really a fan of that. As dumb as King F3 looks, it might actually be good. Considering here, 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 then there's moves like bishop to b5. So white is still fighting. Now we could do nothing. We could just go bishop d7. And white is left with many of the same problems in his position. So I think I'm going to do that. Could I have taken the bishop? Absolutely. But, like I said, after pawn takes, the b-file opens, and it's a bit annoying. Okay, well, he just blundered. Knight takes, bishop takes, queen takes. If he takes here, we take with the queen. And after knight takes, bishop takes, queen takes, there is no bishop to b5 check because we've played bishop to d7. Are there any other tricks? Knight here comes with check. That's very important. So there's nothing like bishop takes here, although pawn takes would come with check anyway. So that just looks like a piece that he's going to hand to us for free. 
it all comes with check so makes our life very easy let's take and after queen takes there is no bishop to b5 check because like i said bishop's on d7 so let's take no tricks here here and he's in big trouble if he plays this we could also just take with the pawn the king would have to go to e2 i mean he could go to g4 but why would you and then like give a check trade the queens could even try and just go for mate with moves like rook to d8 to try and get a rook involved this is game over um and it really just came from putting a lot of pressure on the center okay he doesn't take because queen e2 to keep the game alive I mean, it makes sense. We might as well try and fight on. We do have to still be a bit accurate here. There's no obvious knockout because he's also defending against queen to f2 check. Could go bishop c6. I don't want to castle kingside, like I said, because it gives him too many attacking chances. g5 is kind of tempting. Because if he takes, then knight takes. And then the king has to come out like this. Oh no, he can't. Is that just mate? Here, here, here. That's that's checkmate. We could try and force trades like that. And then we could try and go g4. And if he takes, then we can get our rook involved. So g5 could be a very nice idea. Of course, if he wants to take us, then absolutely. I'll ease, I'll happily give away a pawn or two to trade the queens and the bishop off. G5, I think, might be incredibly accurate. One of my other candidate moves was bishop c6, just to support this knight and try and castle queenside. But the game lasts quite a while after that, I feel like. Because again, we struggle to actually get this bishop involved. I think he notices the danger and he's trying to trade off. However, pawn takes, I think, is a problem. Yeah, because after queen here, we don't take. We could play bishop c6 to win the queen via a pin, but g4 is also a deflection tactic. The king cannot maintain defense of the queen whilst in check because he can't access the e3 square and he can't access the f4 square. e3 because we control it and f4 because his own piece is there. So he has to take and then queen takes queen. Yes, we could have played bishop to c6. And again, you can't take because that's a pin. But I mean, why would I give him a minor piece? for a queen when I can give him a pawn for a queen <laughs> like that's simple maths I'm very happy with that game I think I, I said towards the start of the video the Karo Khan gets a lot of stick for being quite um quite boring but our opponent does play a fun line the fantasy is quite a fun line um in this position playing f3 I will go over a lot of the ideas of the fantasy in the post game review which we are going to do now. All right, so the game review gives us 93% accuracy on the dot. Our opponent 70.2. So we played a very, very solid game there. I feel like a lot of the moves were kind of, of not obvious, but like natural uh, from our side anyway. Performance rating of 2300 is not bad. And like I said, I promised I would explain some of the ideas of the fantasy variation. So as you can see from the evaluation bar, the computer believes that this is better for black. Fairly significantly, considering it's move free of the game. The critical line is to take. And after you take after white takes back, the critical line oh no, don't do this to me, chess.com. Okay, I just have to refresh the page so I wouldn't get spammed with error classifying moves every single time. So, the move is e5 here. And the idea is that you attack 
white's center and if white plays a move like bishop to e3 to try and defend the d4 pawn or if white tries to not advance but take then you have queen to h4 check and you exploit the fact that white moves his f pawn early on well moved it to f3 and then took because the king is in a lot of trouble if g3 then queen takes e4 is a classic tactic attacking the king and the rook and black's completely winning i mean the best move is for white to run the king to d2 and you can pick up e4 if you want to anyway but <clears throat> the point is the position is hopeless for white so after e5 the move is knight to f3 so you defend your center you attack black's pawn and queen to h4 is stopped as black you're supposed to oh no not takes on a there's a lot of moves there really are like you can take on d4 more often than not i see bishop to g4 because i used to play the fantasy variation as white and the idea is that you pin the knight to the queen and then bishop c4 sets up some tactics of bishop takes f f7 king takes f7 knight takes e5 check with an attack on the king and the bishop and white goes up two pawns and black can't castle so just to demonstrate if white if black plays a move like knight to f6 there there check king goes back takes 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 and white is up two pawns with a far better position so black has to be very accurate here. You can play bishop to h5 so that your bishop defends f7. You can also play knight to d7 so that if bishop takes, king takes, knight to e5, then you can play knight e5, which also defends the bishop on g4, which is useful. So typically the game goes like knight d7, castles, and if black is lazy and plays a move like h6 for whatever reason bishop f7 the threat is resumed because if bishop takes king takes then knight to e5 you can't take the knight because you now have a discovered check with the rook so it's a double check king moves bishop falls so there's a lot of traps here i believe the move is knight to f6 blocking off this file so that it's not a double check and again, this does now not work because you can take the knight because this isn't double check. And the game goes on. Very theoretical. As I just showed, there is so much theory. And that's only in the first few moves. Theory continues for a long time in the fantasy variation because a lot of the moves are very forcing. As I just showed, there's a lot of the time like one move or two move defenses. Fair few branches off of those. Honestly, I don't really like it from the white side or the black side. I don't like to study a ton of theory. So, therefore, after f3, we now understand what the point is of f3. I don't let white have any of that fun. I instead play e6. e6 is the second favourite move of the computer. And the point is, you don't give white what he wants. You don't take and let him take back with the f pawn to make a massive center you kind of go okay do you want to take me because if you take me i'm going to take back with the e pawn your pawn is really stupid looking and i have a better position as a result of it i'm kind of a move ahead because you can't put the knight on the correct square your queen can't come out you're probably gonna have to move this pawn to f4 or something but even that you know it's an extra move the pawn doesn't really belong on f4 anyway it's like an exchange french position except the f pawn has just decided to take a road trip for whatever reason and do it very slowly so my opponent goes knight to e2 which i mean it was an odd move anyway knight c3 makes far more sense just fighting for the light squares in the center Computer likes to move c3. Aesthetically, this looks nice, although it looks a bit looks a little bit strange. But I kind of I understand the point of it. But d takes e4. You can't take back because of this whole queen to h4 and picking up the pawn. So here you gambit a pawn like this. 
See, personally, I would be very happy with this position as black. Um, these are the kind of positions that I kind of like to play. White's a pawn up. This happens a lot in the Karo, by the way. White will find a way to sacrifice a pawn for activity. But because my center is so solid, I quite like playing these positions. Even if I do end up castling queenside, I quite enjoy it. I feel like it's easy to hold on to the extra pawn as black. So my opponent goes to knight e2. And like I was explaining in the game, this stops d takes e4 being quite as effective because after f takes e4, queen to h4 no longer works because of knight to g3, which defends e4 and blocks the check. And then we have like queen, uh, bishop to d6 is ineffective because of e5, which comes with tempo. And white now just has a big moment, a, a, a lot of momentum because the whole point of the fantasy is to exchange black's d pawn for white's f pawn which is exactly what white achieves in this position. He's going to go c3 at some point, probably, to build a massive pawn chain. Apparently knight c3 is better, but you understand my point. And just make it incredibly difficult for black to do a whole lot. So that's why we don't do that. Instead, we go knight to f6. And the point is to try and bait e5. White does not have to play e5. White can continue to develop and we can continue to refuse to take and he can continue to refuse to take us and he can continue to refuse to play e5 this has happened quite a few times because normally you want white to advance to e5 and then you try and go for c5 because e5 is then very weak if you can undermine the d4 pawn which is defending the e5 pawn with me sorry for the extended explanation but this is how these Kari Khan positions work and this is how you develop a deeper understanding of them well it's a it's kind of like a French slash Kari Khan at this point because the bishop hasn't gotten out before e6 has been played but you can just continue developing with moves like queen b6 bishop e7 castle you don't really want to bring this knight to d7 because after e5 you want this knight to go to d7 you can try and play c5 a bit earlier on before e5 is played once you get castled and get this bishop out. But it's just an easy position to play from the black side, in my opinion. So our opponent plays e5, which is the most logical move. Knight f to d7. And then knight g3. The computer does not like this move. And I, I kind of questioned it in the game, because this knight is supposed to defend the center. On g3, what does it do? Like what? It controls these squares. Okay. And like it opens this bishop up. Okay. But like this bishop doesn't need to do anything yet. There's nowhere for it to really go that's that useful. And as we saw from the game when it came to d3, all it did was block the queen's vision of the d file off, which was not helpful for him at all. And we play principal chess. C5 punishing his mistake because his knight was supposed to be defending the d4 pawn now d4 is only defended by the queen and it's vulnerable if white takes us then we can probably take play like bishop takes e5 develop with a capture stop white from castling e5 is very weak f4 is going to have to be played to defend e5 we can castle quickly knight c6 queen b6 maybe go f6 at some point to blast open the white center beautiful like perfect french slash caro composition for the black pieces here and this is similar to what we got in the game in terms of the bishop coming out here the knight coming like this and the knight coming like this and the queen coming like this except in this variation you achieve it far quicker so our opponent doesn't allow that. After we go c5, he goes c3. And if you take it, then c takes d4. And white's all right. It's not ideal, but white can survive here. We go knight to c6. Apparently, queen b6 was a l oh, no, actually wants you to take. Hey, The computer's changing its mind a lot. Either way, knight c6 is a great move, and it's very principled. He can't really take us, you know. e5, probably better to take e5 first, because it's very hard to defend the c5 pawn. And if you go for a move like b4, 
and Peter wants like h5, h4, trying to exploit the positioning of the knight. But black just has full central control. At some point, you can probably even play like e5 to take a massive center. The white position isn't great. This pawn structure is kind of weak. And black has dominance in the center and a bit of a leading development. So our opponent win knight to a3, which, you know, he's trying to reroute to c2 and maybe come in through this way, although that's kind of a long-winded plan. Like I said, I did consider the move a6, but I don't think that this is actually that much of a threat. Something fell off here. Now, I was close to playing this move, and after c takes d4, taking the knight. And while black is better here, it's not all that easy to prove it. Queen d2. Um, oh, here you just win a, the pawn, actually. So maybe this was a good line to go for. Apparently the move here is king to f2. White's going to develop this bishop, rook f1, and castle artificially. Black can do a lot better. It's a good position, but you can do better. Which is why we went for queen a5, which is the computer's favourite move here. And the point of queen a5, like I explained, is to pin this pawn. And it's not easy to unpin the pawn. If you go bishop to d2, like I said, I assumed you could take here. And after takes, you queen b6, okay. But you also don't have to take. Apparently coming back to b6 is good. Putting an insane amount of pressure on this pawn. Because now the queen no longer defends it. Because the bishop has moved. And the bishop moving also means that b2 is hanging. So the computer likes this line. Take. 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 And black's just up a clean pawn. Like. There's not much more to it. You're also threatening bishop a3, ba3, and knight c2 check, picking up the rook. So obviously here you take the black position. So after queen to a5, our opponent went knight to c2. Which is logical to defend. But the problem is, c takes d4. You can actually take with the knight as well, which is kind of funny because the pawn's pinned. But no need to be fancy. c takes d4. And this is a bad position. I was half expecting b4 from my opponent, trying to unpin the pawn and attack the queen. And after queen b6, maybe b5 to attack the knight, to get the knight off of the defense. But you can just take on e5 even. c takes d4. The knight can go to g6. The knight can go to c4. c4 is pretty good as well, because then b5 is hanging, because the bishop's connection has been cut off. And again... This position is just so easy for black. You're up a clean pawn. The only issue in your position is the fact that this bishop can't develop very easily. But even from d7, like, b5 is going to be very weak. Maybe once b5 falls, you can put the bishop on c6. Or even bring it out to b5 itself to go on a long diagonal or something. At the end of the day, you're just up a clean pawn. And white has, like, no compensation for it. Again, this knight is completely out of the game. So after bishop d2, the move is to take on c3, because after bishop takes c3, yeah, your queen's under attack, but so what? Computer kind of... Oh no, it's actually changed its mind. It did suggest queen a4, but I guess just b3 gets played, and then the b2 weakness is gone. So it likes my move queen to b6. Initially, I, I didn't want to play this because of like bishop d4 ideas, but our knight controls d4, so that's not a problem. And we also keep some pressure on b2. We stop white from castling. And our queen just remains quite active, right? And we use this to build up a battery with bishop to c5. Our opponent plays the only move, f4, because otherwise e5 is going to fall. There's not really a good way to defend it. a5 is apparently a move. Trying to get big control over the b4 square, which kind of makes sense. But I prefer our move bishop c5, which is the top choice. Just getting on this diagonal, and it's really hard to defend f2. Queen f3 does defend f2, but here we can probably just castle. 
we have a lot of control over the d4 square now with three pieces and the queen no longer defends it because the queen has moved to f3 position kind of plays itself white can try and castle queenside but i mean there's nothing really scary going on on the king side right so he goes a3 and i predicted he would play this to try and play like b4 and force our bishop back but this just allows bishop to f2 check king to e2 and here we took on g3 which i think that's a mistake now the point is and i did kind of say this in the game the knight can't move the computers are just castling i don't like castling because if i do take on g3 i don't want the h file to open while my king is on the king side but i think the computer's point is that the knight has nowhere to go anyway and this bishop is unassailable like the best move is king to d2 like admitting the e2 was the wrong square and you need to go to d2 like what no one's playing that its favorite move is h5 which i do really like and the point is the knight literally has nowhere to go now because h5 is defended by the rook because the pawn is now there right so this bishop cannot be kicked out now i was a little bit worried about him trying to attack my queen and def deflect my queen from the defense of my bishop but there's no good way to do that like bishop a5 you just take with the knight so yeah again king d2 is the move but even if you don't play that queen to d3 h4 attacking the knight and you just lose the knight where yeah the knight can't go anywhere because e2 is taken up f1 is taken up h1 is taken up and we control the other squares so if you try and go after h5 king d2 to give yourself the e2 square then h4 knight to e2 now computer lights knight to c5 because you achieve ah you achieve the same goal you kick this knight off of defending e4 so your own knight can get there i did that by taking it but the computer's point is that you don't need to take it you can keep your incredibly strong dark squared bishop and force the knight back anyway with h5 h4 and then take advantage of the e4 square so like king to c1 knight to d sorry e4 a4 is apparently the move okay um it's very it, white just can't move really can't move like maybe knight e to d4 but then i could even just trade if i wanted to and do something like this or apparently i can just ignore it and go bishop to d7 had i had re had i realized my bishop could not be attacked after bishop f2 check king e2 if i'd realized my bishop was completely safe and i could just attack this knight because i knew the knight didn't have anywhere to go but i didn't think that deeply about it i wanted to i was fixated on putting this knight on the e4 square and whilst i might not have achieved it in the best way it was a simple approach i think so bishop to g3, pawn g3, knight c5. Again, I, I don't castle here. I'm still better, but why would I give white play? Like, queen g3 threatens mate. I've got to go like h6 now. I'm not saying this is a good move, but white can try things like g4 to play g5 or like f5. Why would I even want to get involved in this? My king is safe in the center anyway, because... I mean this pawn chain is basically indestructible and like f4 doesn't work like there's no way that works because i have too many threats here like there's too much going on and taking here i can just take out with the bishop anyway like other than giving the obvious queen f2 king moves knight c5 mate is quite pretty but even if I didn't have that check, I could just, just take with the bishop and everything is held together and my king is perfectly safe. So we go for knight c5. He goes knight to d4. Knight e4. King 
to f3 defending the g3 pawn. f6 is a move here for black, but again, I don't see the point in opening up my king unnecessarily, so we choose bishop d7, which is actually, I think the computer's third, no, second favorite choice. And the point is, if you take, then we get into f2, and you're just going to get mated. I mean, there's a ton of different mates here, but like, there's no way you don't mate white in this position, <laughs> realistically. So we go bishop to d7. And like I said in the game, white has no moves. Like, what does he do? He has no way to exploit my position. Like, his king is on f3, for God's sake. So he chooses um, bishop d3, which just allows knight d4 check. Bishop takes, queen takes, and he goes queen to e2 to try and keep the game alive. Now, if he takes here, we can just take with the d-pawn. And if he tries to go to e2, bishop b5, I, apparently he's just getting mated in this position. That's just checkmate. So, instead he doesn't take, he goes queen to e2. And yeah, g5 is the best move here, and I'm very happy I found that, because... You know, bishop c6 is certainly a move, no doubt. But the game continues. Maybe rook hd1, trying to set up ideas against my queen. There's no need to keep the game going unnecessarily. So we find g5. And g5 is a gorgeous move. It really is. Because white is stuck. His king has no way out. Now, if his queen tries to move to a square like c2 to give the king the e2 square, then g4, if you take, then the rook gets involved and g3 falls alongside the knight attacking it, the rook will be attacking it. So that's not an option. You get forced back here. We could take on g3 with the knight. You could even keep it really simple with queen f2, king d1, and you could even trade queens if you want just to kill the game off immediately. King takes, stopping knight f2 check. But, I mean, this is just a whole piece up. And white has zero counterplay. I does this as well. With a nice little fork. And if you take here, then I assume you take the bishop rather than the rook. Yeah. You, I mean, you could take the rook if you want. But I'd rather just keep the piece up. So, white realizes this. And, oh, and by the way, if you take with the pawn, then knight g5 was mate, as I explained. So, we have bishop takes. And you could take with the queen. But after queen takes here, 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 something like this. These are all pretty obvious moves. The game continues. Again, it's completely winning. Game, the, the game is effectively over, but you're still playing. And there's always a chance to mess up if you have to continue playing. The king is in the center, for God's sake. Let's keep the queens on the board. And the problem is this just wins. Because as we already discovered, the queen can't take. Because either bishop c6 or g4. Bishop c6 pins the queen and g4 deflects the king from the defense of the queen. So if you don't take it, what? You go king g4, the only other legal move. Take. Take. Rook g8 check. <laughs> this is just game over. e3 threatens this. Maybe, whoops. Maybe queen f3 trying to defend, but then like bishop 2 c6. You can't survive this with white. Maybe it's more resilient, but it's still game over. So queen e4. Again, if you do trade queens like this, it's still winning, but it's not game over winning. But g4. Our opponent throws in the towel because... He has two moves, neither of them keep an eye on the queen. And that's game over. That's a 22 move win with the Karo Khan with, uh, what was it, like 93% accuracy, 2300 performance rating. Pretty solid if you ask me. If you enjoyed the video, then um, please check out the other videos on the channel. Drop a subscribe to get notified when the next episode comes out. And I release new videos every day, so you'll be getting notifications every single day. Have a good one.